I will be starting here in a moment. Get started. All right, and of course, my camera's not caught up. Cool. It should fix it. Cool. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and sketch a bit. I want to do some just kind of cute, like profile picture type thing. I was working on like this the other day, but right now. Just kind of doing this. I want to do some soft lines. go. I'm not a big fan of that. Sorry, my ear itched. Let's go ahead and select this. Control C. Control V.
Just use like blue lines on this. Maybe erase that and go a whole bunch of more.
Sorry, I'm kind of adding details to like drawing. I'm trying to do a bit of detailing on the keyboard. But hi, Ray. I've got two art events this weekend that I'm going to be at. Also, I took the liberty last night of going through all of the art on my computer and searching through my art folder to see how many art pieces I have done this year, and including ones I haven't streamed, haven't posted anywhere, and not, not including my sketchbooks and traditional media or crafts or anything like that. Just digital art alone that I've done because of anxiety attacks and anxiety related things. I have a total collection this year of 1,867 art pieces collectively totaled in my art folder this year. I'm just like, I'm just like, I didn't think I drew that much, but apparently I do a lot of art, which is good practice. It's just, it's one of the ways that I deal with a lot of my anxiety issues is drawing. So I draw a lot because my anxiety is always on high. And drawing and art is kind of one of those things that keeps me uh, grounded and sort of sane. I wouldn't say like completely sane because I'm an artist. I'm not going to be completely sane. Come on, look at historical artists. <laughs> look at one that cut his ear off and... <laughs> But yeah, I think a lot of people have kind of had an anxiety trip, like a trip on the anxiety train this year. A few people I used to go to conventions with actually um, have had a lot of anxiety issues this year as well, and it hasn't been great for them as well. And I'm just like, you know, everyone's having anxiety issues this year. And I'm just kind of over here like, ah, see this, this is nothing new to me. This has been my entire life. Um, it's like, ah, yes. Constant ball of anxiety, 24 seven. And um, one of my friends in a group that I'm in on Telegram, they, I told them how much art I did, and they're like, you're an art machine, and I'm like, I'm not an art machine. I, I prefer the term art fairy or art gremlin at this point. Because, <laughs> yeah. It's like, machine, no. I'm, I'm more of a gremlin because this is, like, anxiety-related. Is it this layer? Nope. This layer? No. This layer? No. I think I put it on. No. The heck? It's not that long. Uh, okay. It was that one. Okay. Look, I don't label my layers apparently because I just don't sometimes. And I know I should, but like, I always forget. And I wasn't sure, like, do you just post um, digital art? Like, do you just post like traditional art or do you also do tr the digital art as well?
I was trying to get my desk kind of set up because I actually like um, my desk. I kind of took the liberty to kind of decorate my desk. So it's got pink and white, and I was trying to incorporate that into the drawing. Like, I can help other people through their anxiety and anxiety attacks, but then whenever I have anxiety or anxiety attacks myself, I'm just like, I don't know what to do! Somebody! Kill me! <laughs> ah. I've done a bit of traditional media, but the only problem with that is that I fill up my sketchbooks like, um... I just got this sketchbook last month, like I got one of these hardback ones last month, and already I filled like almost the entire thing with just sketches. And I always end up running out of sketchbooks, and even whenever I get new ones, I fill them up really quickly, and I'm just like... I don't know if traditional is the best route for me because I will waste too many trees. And I don't want to like destroy the environment. Not like, I mean it's art, but still like, just I draw a lot. And I, I like I went through my book books and sketchbooks that I have on hand and I was like, huh, I wonder how many of these are filled and I'll go through them and I've got like ten sketchbooks that are almost completely full and then I'm like, wait, why isn't this one full? And there'll be like four blank pages left and I remember that my brain was like, Oh no, we don't have enough pages left in this sketchbook. So, oh no, we need to buy a new sketchbook and then finish filling up this sketchbook and start a new sketchbook. But once I get the new sketchbook, I'm like, oh, we have a new sketchbook. We don't have to fill our other sketchbook. And that just ends up having the four blank pages left. And I'm just like, why didn't I use these? But at the same time, I'm just like, I understand why I didn't use them because Brain goes ADHD a lot. <laughs> and plus I'm like, oh, it's okay. We, we don't have to fill a sketchbook. It's fine. And then I've got like, I think, three unfilled sketchbooks. One that I have started and haven't finished. And I got like about 60 pages left in it. And then I've got one that's completely blank, hasn't been used, which I'll start after this one. But my current sketchbook that I just got last month, I have almost completely filled in that month's time. And I'm just like, I don't want to run out of sketchbooks, but I also have way too many sketchbooks. And if I had have held on to every single sketchbook that I've had since, like, childhood, I wouldn't have space in my room for every single sketchbook that I would have had. Because there are way, 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 way too many. <laughs> and whenever I go back to, like, DeviantArt and I look at, like, art that I've posted in the past, I will look at the art and I'll go, oh god, what was wrong with you? Like, what, what, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Like, why did you post this? This is terrible. Because I compare it to now and I'm just like, I have come a long way. But also, 
sometimes you look back at old art and you're like, oh, well, this was pretty good. Why did I keep that? Why did I digitize that? But there are some art that I look back on and I'm like, I don't want to look at this. This is terrible. I don't like this. But like looking on art that I do now, I, I have improved a lot and it kind of just amazes me sometimes that whenever I look at old art, I'm like, did I really draw like this at one point? Oh God. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure a lot of artists will go through that. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of artists that have, like, a cringe pile of old art somewhere that's just like, yeah, this, we don't talk about this. Here, let's focus on the present. <laughs> it's, it's just like, I, I'm not sure how many artists have that struggle, like, looking at old art and then comparing it to now, and you're just like, what 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 is this what 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 is this Where, where's the art <laughs> but honestly i don't have a lot of room to talk on that because like if you look at picasso's work and a lot of the really famous artists and a lot of really famous artists had really weird art styles or there are artists that you look at their art and they're like how is how are you a famous artist because like picasso's work it's all abstract and there's not really a defined format to their work and you're just like okay i, I, I get that this is art but like why <laughs> i mean personally i like like a lot of really cute artist styles like um Ginny illustrations is pretty good sorbet jungle tasty peach studios there's a few artists i follow here on twitch that are really good like um bb bunnybot hexy art uh um strawberry milk i think is her user at strawberry Cur and then there's um so Sophie's Daydream and like there's a lot of artists out there that I look at their art and I'm just like ah oh, adorable cuteness want want give give me your talent please <laughs> but then I realized they worked a really long time to develop those skills and to be where they're at now and that I just have to keep working and keep trying hard to achieve where I want to be. But at the same time, I think that a lot of artists are their own worst critic when it comes to art because we usually will say like, well, we want to be good enough at art to where we are happy with it. But to be honest, I don't think artists will ever be completely happy with the work that they do because they will critique and critique themselves until they can't really get out of critiquing themselves. And when they finally like get to a good point, they're just like, no, 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 no. I know that I've reached a good point, but I could be better. I, I could do better. This isn't good enough. And it's like, you have other people looking at the art that are like, this is, this is amazing. This is fantastic work. And you're just like, no, no, I, I can do better. I, I know I can do better. And they're like, you've spent years trying to get where you are. And there are people that would love to have your ability. And you're just like, no, I have to do better. And you tell them that I have to be good enough. But then they ask you like, well, what is good enough for you? And it's really hard to answer that question because your good enough one day might be different than good enough the next day. And like, 
it's just a never ending cycle that artists have that they're never going to be satisfied with their work. And when they finally complete something and they're like, oh yeah, this looks okay. The next day they'll look back on that and be like, well, you know, I could have added this or I, I, this, this could probably be better. I think that a lot of artists go through that because <laughs> I think um, a lot of artists, from what I've noticed historically, have a lot of mental health issues that they deal with. And I think that one of the bigger issues that a lot of artists deal with is like depression and anxiety for a lot of them. And for some of them, it's PTSD. For some of them, it's like dealing with bipolar or BPD. And then there's me who deals with all of the above. <laughs> Like, I am a constant ball of anxiety, but that's because I've had a lot of things happen, and just, I keep trying to make sure I have something there to keep me at least grounded enough to keep me from uh, another mental issue that I deal with, which is being very, to a point, um that every day I go through, I want to just not and be here. That's, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Cause I don't want to like get on a very sensitive or touchy subject for some people that could be triggering, but yeah. Like it, it's, Art is about well, one of the things that has kept me where I am and kept me on a level to be able to handle life the way I handle it. If I didn't have art or the things that I draw, I probably wouldn't be here and I probably wouldn't be at the point that I am artistically. And like people, when I tell them how much art I've done this past year with like it being 1,867 images, they're just like, holy shit, that's a lot of art. And I'm like, no, that's a lot of days that I spent like trying to battle my insecurities and my anxiety and meltdowns and everything I deal with. That's, that's every personal piece I've made to help me get through really hard days. And it's part of how I cope with life is just kind of make art, create things. I'm like, this is not a lot of art. This is a lot of coping and dealing with it in a healthy manner for the most part, <laughs> or at least trying. Like, I think that art is one of the more healthier coping mechanisms that a person can have whenever they're going through, like, mental struggles and stuff. Because, like, you can be very expressive with just a few images or just a few lines on a page. Ah. I understand that. I I go to therapy currently, but I'm also seeing a trauma specialist because 
I've had a lot of bad things happen in life and I have to deal with them and process them and it's really hard, but I'm trying and part of my brain is kind of like, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to process this. This is not, this is not something I want to do. It's scary. I, I can't, but at the same time, I know I have to, to be able to get better and be able to actually get it processed and understand that, hey, those things weren't your fault and you're okay now. It's, it's okay. Sure, you got really, really hurt, but you're okay. You're going to be okay and we can get through this. I know that um, that can be pretty hard, but like, I think the reason why I do a lot of stuff, well, not just because I need constant distractions because of my anxiety, it's mostly I, I do have like ADHD and autism, so I do tend to hyper fixate on things whenever I'm anxious or overwhelmed or trying to deal with things. So I tend to hyper fixate on special interests and deal with my anxiety that way. But I also have major depressive disorder and seasonal depression, which can make things really hard with my brain because every day my brain's like, I don't want to get up. I don't want to do things. I don't want it to exist, but my anxiety goes, no, no, we have to do things. We have to stay busy or else the thoughts are going to get to us and we can't, we can't let the thoughts get to us. So we have to do things and, and avoid those thoughts and keep running and running away from everything instead of just dealing with it. Because having both anxiety and depression and all the stuff mentally is very hard and it's kind of a fight each day with myself internally and it's exhausting and I other people that have to go through the same things I would probably tell them that you've made it this far you've gotten this far and even though you're dealing with those issues and trying to cope with them you are where you are today because you made it this far and because you've put up with the battles this long and i'm proud of you because you didn't give up and you kept going and even though you feel like giving up you didn't and for that that's a reason to be proud of yourself Like, life is very hard at times, and sometimes there's a lot of things that make it even harder to get through, but you keep going, and sure, each day is going to feel like I didn't give it my all, I didn't give it my best, but in honesty, your best is not going to be your best tomorrow, it's not going to be the same as your best yesterday, your best is going to be different each day and it doesn't matter if you're giving 10% of yourself one day and then maybe 48% another day and 100% one day and then 200% another. You are trying, you are doing what you can and that is enough, that is good enough, that is all you can really do. Because even though it's hard, you're still doing the thing. You're still making it through. And even if you think you're just barely scraping by, you're still a lot further than where you would have been yesterday. You're still a lot further in life than if you had have just given up. And that... That's honestly makes you a very strong person.
and going to therapy and stuff, that's great. And that's wonderful. Like, going to therapy is very good. And it's good that you are seeking therapy. Whenever I first started my therapy sessions back in 2012, after a really bad hospitalization, I was very scared to go to therapy because of how things had been in the past with a lot of people. I was afraid to open up to my therapist or to even try therapy because I was hesitant because of past treatment. But it, it's okay to go to therapy and it's okay to ask for help even if it's really hard to do. Sorry, I was taking the sketch doodle things I did the other day. And I, I basically did like just some random doodles and ideas I had and just kind of had them here. Anxiety is very hard to deal with, but it's something a lot of people go through, actually. And there's a lot of different forms of anxiety, too, which kind of makes me anxious, ironically. Because there's, there's a lot... There's like, I think, three main types of anxiety, and then a few disorders. Oops. Stop that. Um, therapy can be very helpful. Um, I do therapy with my therapist because therapy is kind of the only option I have at this point because there isn't a medicational or medicinal option for me, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. <laughs> My brain doesn't want to process the chemicals like it should and doesn't interact with medications in a good way. So I don't have the best reactions with a lot of medications that are for anti-psychosis or for psychological well-being. My brain tends to go yeet <laughs> or decides to have an allergic or adverse reaction, which can really, really be scary.
but everyone's different and what works for one person may not work for another person and what works for one person may work for another person it just kind of depends on how your brain works and the human brain is still not fully understood but we're working on it I'll do that one Let's go and give a little bit of like airbrush kind of huh odd. Is it just like? Yeah, that should be good. Blend that out. That was my phone. I know that was my phone. Ouch. Ugh. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, that'll be my left hand. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and sign this. And go ahead and grab Nope. There we go. Go ahead and put some stars. I feel like I ramble and rant a lot. All right, cool. Um, files save as. So, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream for now, but thanks for following, thanks for hosting, thanks for watching. Um, feel free to follow for more content, and I will see you all next stream. Bye!